have the glories and the disgraces. I'm done, cause all this time I've just won a word in a stupid rhyme. So I picked up a pen and a microphone. History's about to get overthrown. Divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded. Survived. Welcome to the show, to the History Mix. You're watching The Rose Table, and this is my sixth musical-themed dinner party. I was lucky enough to see the U.S. premiere of The West End Sensation in Chicago this summer, and I was so blown away and inspired by the show that I decided to host my very own six-themed party to celebrate its Broadway debut. Now, you might not have heard of Six just yet because it is a new musical, but I know you're familiar with its content. It's a creative reimagining of the lives of the six wives of King Henry VIII. So get ready for a modern twist on a Tudor feast. Okay, ladies, let's get in reformation. The musical is presented as a rock concert, which you can see here in this footage that I shot last summer at Chicago Shakespeare Theater. The six queens enter a singing competition to see who had the most tragic life. It might sound sad, but trust me, it's actually incredibly uplifting, and the music is out of this world. <laughs> Each queen has a different color, gold, green, white, red, pink, and blue. There's almost no set to speak of except for lighting, so I projected each queen's color behind her. I styled the table with a purple tablecloth, the color of royalty, of course, and left the center totally clear for our modern Tudor feast. I used silver chargers in lieu of plates, plus my silver mint julep cups for that Tudor touch. Each queen's napkin, presented with a crown napkin ring and a mini floral arrangement, were tailored to her color. There's no silverware on the table because we used our hands for the main feast, just like the Tudors. And this fun place card marked each queen's spot instead of her name. The rainbow effect was even more amazing than I was anticipating, and you could use this same idea for so many different fun parties. I also proudly displayed my program from Chicago Shakespeare Theater on my side table. If you look closely, you can see that I had it signed by all six queens. I waited in line for an hour, but it was totally worth it. First, we gotta get our cocktails ready. This is gonna be such an exciting thing. We're actually putting edible gold, liquid gold, into our cocktails for a queen's cocktail. So this is Barnabas Gold Blot, Gold Flakes. Make sure you get edible gold, of course. And you can see how it comes. It's all like one big piece. And we're gonna break this up using champagne. Use a funnel to very carefully, we'll see if I can do this, very carefully pour. Perfect, right to the top. Okay, just screw the cap back on and you're just gonna shake it. You want it a lot smaller than this. So you just wanna keep shaking. Isn't that gorge? That's about where you want it. Now, there's two different methods here, and both of them work. So you can actually take your funnel and funnel this into the champagne and then pour the champagne. But personally, I like to pour a little liquid gold in each champagne glass. And then just fill them up. So all this is is a little lemon simple syrup, which is just lemon juice and sugar, and then your liquid gold. My friends were really part of the decor. They're all major Six fans and channeled their queens perfectly and just looked absolutely incredible. They also happen to be singers and I'm jealous because I am not, but I am a cook and I came up with six different dishes, one for each queen. So I thought, you know, something very like old world for our Spanish queen. She was like very classy, very like old school queen. So we're just going to spread on big jam. Top it with some chorizo, of course, very popular in Spain. Okay, and then top it with a piece of manchego, also Spanish cheese. And this is where it gets really exciting. So we're gonna top this with edible gold. So you can see how beautiful these flakes are. Look at that, and this stuff's very delicate, so you don't wanna reach it with your hands. You're going to want to reach in there you go. Grab a piece, and then we're going to top it with edible gold. Mm. Spanish queen, Christine, how fun is that? You must think that I'm crazy. You wanna replace me, baby, there's no, 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 no way. For Anne Boleyn, we have green sleeves for our green sleeves. 
<laughs> okay, have you ever done like prosciutto wrapped berries before? Yes. That's okay. my favorite. Oh, yay! I'm yeah. so glad. Okay, so we're just taking our prosciutto. We're going to start like kind of down at the okay. bottom. And then we're just going to roll it. You're probably going to be better at this because I'm <laughs> doing a million things. So we're just rolling okay. to where it's covering most of it. Beautiful. And there you go. L-O-L, say oh well, or go to hell. Of course, your solo is Heart of Stone. So what's better than an artichoke Heart, heart of Stone, stone. tartlet? <laughs> Come on, got yep. me. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to build this. Sure. We're gonna have you working on this. Okay, so you're just gonna mound up some ricotta cheese. You know I love my cheese. We're gonna hit it with just a little squeeze of lemon. All right. And then we're going to set our, our artichoke in there. And then we're going to top it with some chive so fancy. Okay, you got it? my Anna of Cleves eating pheasant. Keep it on the bone. Oh yeah. Now the pheasant had to be in the oven for two whole hours so I had to do this by myself before the guests arrived. Basically just salt and pepper the outside of the skin, brush with melted butter, put on more salt and pepper, stuff the pheasant with orange slices, garlic cloves, sage, and rosemary. And then when it's almost done, you just give it a lovely glaze that's honey, orange juice, and butter. Oh my god, this stuff smells amazing. Sitting here all alone on a throne in a palace that I happen to own. Bring me some pheasant, keep it on the bone. Fill my goblet up to the brim Sipping on mead and I spill it on my dress With the gold lace trim Not very prim and proper This is a sexual tart For you For a sexual tart Oh my gosh So this is caramelized onions They've been going for like two hours Oh my gosh, they smell amazing I wish you could smell them oh, Right Then I'm just gonna have you Sprinkled cheese evenly. Okay, that looks great. So we're just gonna pop that in the oven for like 20 minutes and then we're topping it with crispy bacon and rosemary. It's like four of my favorite ingredients. Wow, wow. Don't you don't need to plead Cause I feel the chemistry Like I get you and you get me And maybe this is it He just cares so much It feels legit Last but not least, that's me, Catherine Parr, the final wife of King Henry VIII. For Catherine, I made Parr Mijan cheddar scones. See what I did there? English scones that are ahead of their time. They're filled with Cotswold cheddar, salty Parmesan cheese, creamy buttermilk, and a bit of cayenne for a little kick. I made these a couple of hours before the party. They're amazing straight out of the oven, but they stay good for days. I love this recipe, and I hope you will too. See Henry, yeah, it's true I'll never belong to you Cause I am not your toy to enjoy Till there's something new As if I'm gonna give up my boy My work, my dreams to care for you Ha! Darling, get a clue There's nothing you can do I don't need your love Okay, ladies, you look absolutely incredible This is one of my favorite parties I've ever done Because, oh my gosh, the aesthetics right now And I love that, like You've got your pink behind you. Allie's got her red behind her. Everybody has their colors looking so marvelous. Please dig in and uh, enjoy. Can you get a cheers? Yay! Cheers! cheers.
crowning glory, we have to talk about this show-stopping cake. The six wives put aside their differences to come together at the end of the show. So to celebrate that, I made a rainbow cake featuring the queen's six colors all baked into one glorious cake. First, I made a shimmering gold crown out of fondant. The full instructions and all of the recipes, of course, are on therosetable.com. The crown needs at least 36 hours to dry, so be sure to make it first. Then I made the lemon cake. I divided the batter to make the six colors, carefully scooping and layering each color on top of the last. It does take a while, but it produces the most stunning effect. Isn't it so fun to look at? Ellie and Lucy's faces say it all. Well, that's it for six, but tune in next month for Disney Dinner's Tangled. Story to the years lost in history.